there's no doubt that thanks to aviation the world is becoming a much smaller place. Journeys that used to take days to complete can now be taken in a matter of hours. And with modern aircraft, the range that you can fly without refueling is getting even longer. Now, the longest non-stop flights today are over 9,000 miles long without stopping, with flight times of over 17 hours. That means you could fly halfway around the world without refueling, which is a massive leap in technology compared to just a few years ago. But what's it actually like to fly on such long flights like this in economy class without even stopping for a break? So in the interest of science, I'm about to go and find out. I'm going to be taking the world's two longest flights pretty much back to back within 24 hours of each other and I'm going to be doing it all in economy class so that I can find out what it's like to fly on these really long flights and whether or not it's worth having that break in the middle after all. We're going to start off over here at London Heathrow International Airport. We're going to be jumping on the Qantas Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner and heading directly non-stop to Perth in Western Australia. This flight will be around 16 hours and 45 minutes long on the Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. Once we arrive in Perth, we head across to Auckland in New Zealand with a stopover in Sydney, uh, flying on the Qantas Airbus A330 and the Boeing 737-800. And from Auckland, we will be taking the world's longest non-stop commercial flight with Qatar Airways straight to Doha in Qatar in the Middle East. That flight will be around about 18 hours long and it's operated by a Boeing 777-200LR aircraft. In Doha we have a few hours overnight to connect in between our flights before we make a relatively short haul flight for this trip on the Airbus A380 direct to London Heathrow Airport back here in the UK and that flight again is relatively short at about eight hours long at least compared to the other flights that we're doing on this trip. Now. I have to admit that even I'm a little apprehensive about this trip. I'm going to be spending a pretty much unbroken 72 hours on board flights, which is crazy even for me. I've got a 17 hour flight to kick it off with, um, a hop over to Auckland in New Zealand by comparison, and then an 18 hour flight from Auckland back to Doha and then straight back here to the UK. I'm going to the other side of the world and back in three days. But I'm hoping that with a few movies and a comfortable seat, it won't be too bad. I mean, it's 25,000 miles. How bad can it be? Now here in the UK it's the middle of winter, in Australia it's the middle of summer so I think it's time to switch to my summer haircut before we go. Right, that's better. Let's go. here at the world famous Myrtle Avenue here at London Heathrow Airport. Uh, the reason I'm here to start this journey is because I parked my car on one of the driveways just there using just park as I always do. Uh, I'm going to take a little walk just down to Hatton Cross tube station now and it's about one, it's just one stop down to Heathrow Terminal 3 where I'm going to catch the one streamliner on today's inaugural flight down to Perth, Australia. absolutely buzzing down here. They've got all sorts of events on for everybody travelling on this, the first non-stop flight to Australia. Um, I've checked in and I've got myself a nice little Perth passport holder and a ticket to Rottnest Island, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do because I'm only there for a few hours, but um, it's really nice of them. It's absolutely buzzing down here. Loads of media about um, film crews and things going, things going on. So yeah, it's Oh my goodness me, how cool is this? We have just been called inside, inside the lounge, and asked if we would like to come and stand outside the Qantas 787 Dreamliner that's taken us all the way to Perth. Of course I said yes. Look at this. What an absolutely incredible opportunity this is to stand right next to the plane that is going to fly us all the way, halfway across the world. Absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Thanks so much for standing here at the Principal Institute. Oxygen bag went uh, 
speaking on behalf of Captain Andrew Simpson. First officer Dan Peace and uh, our second officer Jason Jackson. Ragnar and all the team, I'd like to uh, add you a very uh, special welcome aboard this uh, brand latest aircraft in the Qantas fleet. Uh, the uh, paintwork, if you haven't seen it from the side, is uh, done by a, uh, by a lady named Emily Kamanawari uh, and is, uh, signifies uh, pretty much all the Australia and what it means to us. Very, uh, we're all ready to go now. We're just waiting uh, for air traffic control to get issues for uh, clearance to push back. Relatively short uh, taxi for Heathrow uh, today. We'll be taking off on the runway that's directly behind us at this stage. Uh, and taking off uh, to the right as we sit here at the gate, cutting pretty much straight out over the east over, over Europe. Smooth flying conditions are uh, expected for the majority of our flight today. However, there will be a uh, 17 hour flight as you imagine, a few uh, bumps. Eagles along the way will do our very best to uh, ensure that it is as smooth as we can make it. For those of you on the right hand side and a few on the left, there's a, a bit of a farewell party uh, once we get underway. They'll give you the flags. Feel free to take as many photos as you can. The captain will come back and wander through the aircraft at some stage, so uh, don't have a chat. We can talk about this uh, beautiful aircraft. Now I invite you to sit back, relax, uh, enjoy the outstanding service that the team have for you today. I won't bother you again until we uh, get a little bit too closer to Perth, shall we say, tomorrow. Cheerio.
to our flight and I'm still on UK time because we are essentially um, basically I'm just seeing this as one big trip home and because that's all it is I'm only away for a couple of days so at the moment UK time it's 5.40 in the afternoon we left at about 1.15 this afternoon so we're currently over Turkey at 36,000 feet and it's a wonderful flight so far and to be honest the first four and a half hours has flown by I've been watching a bit of TV we've had dinner a bit of red wine as well it's really been nice the aircraft itself is so comfortable and it feels just like sitting on the ground the seat even in an economy class the seats are really comfortable and I've not got um, I've got any cramp or anything yet so far touch wood and um, we've just got a 12 hour flight to go now basically so the way I'm looking at it is we have just done a four hour flight and uh, we've now got a 12 hour flight that's the way I'm looking at it basically um, so I'm gonna go and watch a bit more TV and then know when it gets to late evening UK time about 10 11 o'clock time I'm going to get my head down and try and get a bit of sleep hopefully to keep myself on UK time zone and then from there on in we should be arriving at Perth as soon as the sun comes up in the morning on my time um, it'll actually be just after lunch time so yeah, let's go back to the seat then and go and try and enjoy the rest of this flight.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. No worries at all. I'm really great, mate. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Good to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Here's a cracker. How's the flight? It was awesome. Was it good? Everyone's looking really fresh. Yeah. Okay, so the force has all died down, everybody's gone home. I'm sitting here at Perth Airport at the moment. I've got about another 10 hours to go until my next flight. I'm feeling a little bit down in the dumps now, actually, because obviously after the high of that one as well, but obviously now I'm kind of far away from home. I've still got a really long flight back to go back to um, London Heathrow as well via Doha. I've got another 18 hour flight to do tomorrow and uh, one was all right, but I'm not sure that the second one is going to be just as good. So i um, feeling a little bit at the moment. Um, I'm going to try and do something to try and cheer myself up a little bit. It's still really early at home. I can't talk to anybody at home yet because they're all still in bed. So um, the airport here is kind of deserted, depressive, all gone home. I'm going to try and head out and find something to do for a few hours just to try and take my mind off the fact that I'm at the other side of the planet, um, about 9,000 miles away from home. So every time I come on a trip like this, everybody always says you need to do something authentic and something local while you're there. So you know what, I've got a few hours to spare, let's do something Australian for a bit. Um, this was just the Qantas domestic terminal, but now international flights are going from here as well. So it's kind of terminal now. Terminal, terminal. What was Terminal Three is now Terminal Three and Four, uh, or something like that. Anyway, and it's basically sharing one terminal at different wings. So I'm not quite sure where I need to go in here to get my domestic flight today to Sydney. So let's head in and try and find out. Have you heard the racket that these birds are making here in this tree? I don't know what sort of birds they are, but I sound like this is this. Crazy. Okay, so I'm now airside here at Perth Terminal 3. You can see there's a few Qantas aircraft out there on the apron. Very Australian, loads of Qantas 737s, about the only place in the world that you actually see them, um, apart from here in New Zealand. So it's Always nice to see them, it gives you an idea of how far you've travelled, really. Uh, that's one just going past right now, look. He's inbound from Sydney. And this one here I think is going out to, where's it going? Adelaide, in South Australia. So, there's quite a few Qantas planes here, being in a Qantas terminal, there would be. Not really a lot to do here, airside. I've got about five hours until my flight. UK time it is, what is it, quarter past 11 in the morning, um, the time zone that I'm still on, um, UK time. Obviously keeping on UK time for this. Um, we've got about another five hours until our flight board, so I might go and get a sleep, something to eat or something. 
and not really a lot. The lady at check-in comically said that up here is like Luton Airport, and I said don't do yourself down, but it's really not far wrong, wrong from that. On to 717, look at that. He's in from where? Is he coming from? Paraburdu. Paraburdu. What a random place. Okay. Anyway, let's go listen to it. National terminal waiting for my flight over to Auckland. So an update on the GoPro situation. I since I spoke to you in Perth I've gone through my bag entirely and there is absolutely no sign of my camera in there. It's not been reported as found or anything at Heathrow either. And thinking back, I am absolutely 90% certain that somebody has picked it up off the seat and walked off with it. I literally put it down on a seat, turned around, took a photo, went back again and it had gone. So my only assumption is that somebody has walked off with it and I'm absolutely gutted about it. Um, the footage, I can probably replace most of it, uh, which I'll probably do on the way back. But other than that, uh, it's just the monetary value of it. It's like three or four hundred pounds worth of stuff that someone just picked up and walked off with, which is wonderful really, isn't it? Um, so really frustrated about that. Um, just a word of caution for you guys, really, if you're flying through London or any big airport, just make sure you keep an eye on your belongings because it just takes a 30 second lapse in concentration um, and you've lost potentially hundreds of pounds worth of stuff. So I'm here at McDonald's just grabbing a mighty McMuffin meal which is amazing and a black coffee to start the day. It's just getting light out here um, in Sydney and just waiting for my flight over to Auckland now. Yay! You guys have got to see this. Look at us. This is McDonald's here in yeah. Look how they do the food, so they make the food up there, and I don't know whether you can see that. And it's all the way down on the little conveyor thing. And down to the bottom. That's probably fair. And there's another one. Fresh from the kitchen. And another one next door already. That's so cool.
Okay, so I am here now at Auckland International Airport. Right just there at the side of me is the Boeing 777 that's going to take me on the world's longest flight from here to Doha in Qatar. It's hard to believe that less than 24 hours ago I was still on board the world's second longest flight from London to Perth and now I'm here in Auckland about to board the world's longest flight and it's all a little bit crazy to be honest but I think the flight itself isn't that daunting after the um, flight over from Perth, it wasn't too bad and I'm hoping this is going to be the same again. Um, the thing that's really been bad is the fact that I've been away from my wife and kids uh, for the last few days and the time zone here is about 13 hours ahead of the UK so it's very difficult to be able to speak to anybody. I'm uh, feeling like very isolated from everybody at the moment and really looking forward to getting home so every mile that we take now is a mile closer to home for me which is brilliant so yeah there we go there is the qatar airways 777 let's go and take a seat and very soon we'll be boarding for the epic 18 hour flight to doha <clears throat> okay so i'm determined i'm going to look after myself a little bit more on this flight than i did on the last few that i've done um i I've been neglecting to take my medication that I have to take every day for various bits and pieces and I've not been particularly drinking enough and I'm feeling a little bit rough as a result of it so I am getting some nice healthy juice into me now ahead of this really long mammoth flight um, and just trying to relax a little bit it's a very long way and still seems pretty crazy that I have come all the way to New Zealand and I've been coming all the way to New Zealand and back to the UK again within three days. It's a bit insane, I have to admit, but it's fun and it's getting a lot, some crazy um, flight videos for you guys as well, so hopefully it'll all be worth it in the end. We'll be boarding in about half an hour. Flight 126 to Brisbane, due to the late arrival of your inbound aircraft, your flight has been delayed and is now expected to depart at 5 p.m. from gate 2. Qantas apologizes for any inconvenience caused by this delay. I'm starting to feel insanely tired now. Um, I don't know what day it is, really. In fact, I really don't know what day it is. I don't really know how long it is since I've actually left London. I know that it's that I'm getting back on Wednesday lunchtime after leaving on Sunday lunchtime. That's all I know. I think it's Tuesday, maybe today. I've had about two hours sleep in the last three days, so I'm getting a little bit weary now, I have to say, and I'm hoping that on this flight I'm able to sleep for some of it, um, or at least when it gets dark after the first few hours um, that I want to see um, flying over Australia. So, um, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Okay, we're boarding. Here we go. Really not sure about this, but let's go.
Okay, so we are now about 13 hours into today's flight. We've got five hours left to run. We are just approaching the island of Sri Lanka at 38,000 feet. And yeah, I have to say I've quite enjoyed this flight so far. Um, aside from me being really tired and grumpy when I got on, um, I got on board on a really nice um, dinner. Slept for six hours. This is the great thing about these flights, slept for six hours. Um, watched a movie, watched an entire season, the first season of um, Young Sheldon, which is one that I've been wanting to watch for a while. Um, watched the entire first season of that, and we've still got another five hours left to go. That's the brilliant thing about these flights, you just have so much time to just relax and sleep and get a full a full night's sleep and watch a load of movies and things at the same time. It's, there's so much time to do whatever you want to do, really. It's, um, it's one of the things I really like about these long flights, actually, and it's something that I wasn't thinking I would enjoy about them, but I really am. So yeah, I've got another five hours left to run. It's really dark. I'm hoping to do a bit of a cabin walk around at some point. I'll get some video of that. But it's the lights have been off for most of the flight with the shades down, so it's a bit dark. I'm not really been able to do that. So hopefully before we land, we'll get some light and I'll be able to have a bit of a wander around and show you the cabin front to back. So yeah, well, I'll speak to you again in a bit. So I am now here at the magnificent Hamad International Airport here in Doha, Qatar after taking the world's longest commercial flight. Uh, it was over 18 hours today that flight and yeah it wasn't quite as good as the um, Qantas one that I did the other day but again it's an older plane so you can't really expect it to be um, up to dream line quality and plus it was a longer flight as well um, and I also have to remember that I'm now two-thirds of the way back home I've only got a very short hop tomorrow um, with Qatar Airways um, over to London Heathrow on the Airbus A380 so I'm now here at Hamad International Airport and the Oryx Airport Hotel, formerly the Airport Hotel, have very kindly invited me to come and spend a few hours of R&R &R at their hotel overnight before I get my final flight of this trip tomorrow. the Oryx Airport Hotel here at Doha's Hamad International Airport. I stayed here about a year ago um, on my um, Egypt flight um, with Qatar Airways before the A350 you may remember. It's since had a complete renovation and has been rebranded and everything so the airport hotel have very kindly invited me back here to come and have a look around and show you guys all everything that they've been up to um, and all the facilities that they've got here. So let's have a look around this room. A bed for a start and this is the first time I've seen a bed. Oh since I left London um, three days ago. So really nice, I'm looking forward to hitting that later. But before we go any further, let me show you the view out of my room here. And it shows you again how close we are to the departure lounge. There is the departure lounge at Hamad Airport. You can see the big bear there um, at the bottom. 
and the gates are just underneath um, where all those trolleys and things are um, behind the escalators. That's where all the gates are where you can board your flight. It doesn't get any more convenient than this for flying through Hamad International Airport. Um, I've already gone through security tonight uh, after my flight in from Auckland and all I've had to do is just go through security, come up here to the hotel and in the morning, just walk straight down to the plane. It's that easy. Look at this massive, huge TV. I'm not sure that I'm going to be doing much watching TV tonight because it is very late and I'm very, very tired, but never mind. Um, so we'll have a wander through and check out the bathroom because the bathroom, if I remember right, is absolutely incredible in this place and it does not disappoint. There's a fantastic, huge shower. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. I'm so looking forward to jumping in that in a bit. And look, we have there um, beautiful double sink and toilet and boudoir and all sorts of other things. As airport hotels go, you don't get much better than this, I have to say. Um, you will have seen some of the hotels I've stayed in before and they are absolutely nowhere near as nice as this place. So, yeah, fantastic. I'm going to try and get my head down tonight and get some sleep because I really do need it. And I'm, in the morning, I'm going to be checking out the um, Vitality Wellness and Wellbeing Centre that they have here, which has got hot tubs, saunas, swimming pools, everything. Trust me, with my muscles aching as they are at the moment after those two ridiculously long flights, I really could do with that before I get on my last and final flight back to London. <laughs> to be laying in an actual bed. First bed I've seen in three days. Oh, and boy, am I ready for this. I'm gonna try and get some shut eye now because I've gotta be up at 5 a.m. to do a little bit of filming here for the hotel and then get down to the gate to board our A380 back to London. So I'm gonna get some sleep. See you tomorrow. Well, good morning from Doha's Hamad International Airport and the Oryx Airport Hotel. Um, I've just slept for about four and a half hours. I've got to go now um, because my flight will be boarding in about an hour's time. But before we do that, I'm going to check out the amazing Vitality Wellness and Fitness Centre that they have here um, at the Oryx Airport Hotel. Now, this is um, part of the hotel. Anybody who flies through Doha's Hamad International Airport can actually use it for a fee or if you stay here at the hotel it's free. I really could do with some uh, rest and relaxation right now. Um, my muscles are aching. I am so sore after these last two ridiculously long flies. So I'm going to go and check that out now and hopefully be back up here in about another hour's time to go down and get my flight back to London.
well needed hat. This Vitality Wellbeing Centre that they have here is absolutely amazing. Anybody can come and use it. If you're transiting through the Doha airport, um, you can come and pay as you go and just come and, and use the spa and the pool facilities and the gym and everything. Or if you stay here at the Oryx Hotel, it's absolutely in included in your rates free of charge. So, looking down there, there's the bear. Departure Lounge, my flight leaves in around about an hour's time. So I'm going to be heading down now to the gate area uh, to catch our Airbus A380 for today's flight. Very, very short hop for this one, eight hours, and it's straight back to London Heathrow on the Airbus A380. And let me tell you, I am so ready to get home now. Thank you. One hours after leaving Heathrow Airport for the other side of the world, I am back here 25,000 miles flown in 71 hours, and I'm back here in a very cold and very rainy London Heathrow Airport. I am absolutely exhausted. I have my subsistence to keep me refueled for the journey home. I've got about a two hour drive back home to the Midlands now. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. It's really awesome of you to watch. I need to go and have a lie down and get some sleep because I haven't slept in about three days. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Please do hit that like, share and subscribe button and all of the full flight videos that you've seen in this trip report will be coming very, very soon to in-flight video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon.